Hey guys, welcome back to the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have another fascinating guest with me today. Um, I, I, someone whose research I, I've looked into and I, I thought he was fascinating. And a couple of my subscribers um, referred me to him. His name is Tony Sayers. Um, a little bit more about my guest. Um, he had his initial awakening 10 years ago when he mainly broke through boredom and being run into the ground from his corporate job. It forced him to ask the big question in his life for the first time, his first book, are you living or just existing was based on how he felt at the time. The dominoes started to fall as he went into deeper truths and the usual rabbit holes such as 9-11, fake moon landings and the like. Six years ago, and really the start of the metaphysical journey after a series of synchronicities which led him to discover about fake chakras and etheric implants, which would be the basis of what his work has become today. Tony is also passionate about exposing the fake awakening in terms of the New Age movement. An author of six books, Tony is passionate about helping the world in his own way, along with others, in order to put an end to evil taking place on the planet once and for all. And his website is uh, transcendingtimes.org. And I want to welcome him for being on the show. Tony, thank you for coming on. How are you? Yeah, and thanks for having me on, Robert. I really, uh, really appreciate you inviting me on. And a uh, big hello to all your guests. And uh, yeah, look forward to getting into it. Uh, before we get into all the, the stuff you're working on, I, I wanted to go we'll, to talk a little bit about what we talked about before the show, which is that you're living in Mexico, so you got the chance to see the Mayan ruins. And I asked you if you believed in maybe the ancient alien theory, but you think this might be more advanced humans. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'm from the UK and uh, I've been living now in Mexico for three years. And of course, it's a, a very interesting country. Um there's a lot of ruins, not just here in Mexico, but all these ruins are all through Central America and Guatemala and, you know, Honduras and all these places. So these civilizations really did stretch all the way up the, you know, up the uh, Central American uh, passage, if you like. And uh, it, it's really fascinating seeing how, well, first of all, how they built these things. I mean, you look at the construction. I was just saying to you off air, I went to visit one in a place called Chalua the other day and uh you just wonder how they they piece these things together you know the brickwork and everything like that so they they definitely must have had something going on uh some kind of technology that they were using um you know i got told the story that they were you know using carts and all of this stuff and like i said to your fair you never you never know what to believe how much of it you know is, is just sort of government propaganda um, but what, what was interesting was the, the stories of, you know, when the Spanish came over, they wiped out all of these beliefs and, and all of their gods and they introduced Catholicism. And they actually, it, the interesting thing about the ruins that I went to the other day, the, the Spanish actually built a church on top of the pyramid. So they really were making a statement in terms of, look, this is the new religion here now. Um, and really, it, it seems very symbolic of, uh, you know, just more dictatorship and uh, more sort of, I don't know, stamping over people's rights and the way they want to live their lives. So it was really apparent to me that this is just another extension of what we're seeing going on today. Um, now, that's not to say that these ancient uh, civilizations weren't brutal. I mean, you had human sacrifice and all of this stuff going on with that as well. So, um, but yeah, it, it, it's very interesting. But in terms of aliens, uh, my, my, my opinion on, on aliens is that uh, this whole disclosure thing is, is a psyop. Um, I don't believe in physical aliens. I believe that I definitely believe in interdimensionals. Um, and that is what uh, people, I think, are referring to as, as aliens. And a lot of these interdimensionals are just negative entities and they will masquerade as aliens, greys or, you know, that's the form that they take. Um, but I think the whole idea of, you know, there's going to be a big disclosure by the government and aliens are going to land um, is kind of a big psyop, which maybe is tied into Project Bluebeam, um, which I'm sure a lot of your viewers will know about in terms of like a fake alien invasion using holographic technology. Um, I do believe that is one of the cards that they have up their sleeves to, that they want to play. Um, and I think that all just ties into that. I think they need to get people to believe that there are sort of these outside visitors when in actual fact, these 
quote unquote visitors are, are literally just coming in and out of dimensions. Um, and I think when we see a lot of craft, this is just what I believe to be true. Um, and based on my knowledge, what when we're seeing craft, I think a lot of that is probably black ops tech um, in a physical form, but also interdimensional technology coming in and out of dimension. So it's not sort of coming out, coming into the Earth's atmosphere from out of space. It's actually already in and it's just coming through the dimensions and, and becoming uh, uh, sort of piercing the veil so we can sometimes uh, see the, 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 the technology. So I think it's a mixture of those things. But uh, yeah, the, the whole, you know, aliens coming down here and building things. And I, I just don't, it doesn't resonate for me. I, I, I agree with you. And I, I'm really open minded to it because I think these entities can be like right beside us. Like as you and I are talking right now, because our vision is impaired, because we only see a certain amount of percentage of the electric magnetic light spectrum. And I'm not even sure I understand fully what that means. I just know that it limits our vision perspective greatly. And we don't see everything that we're able to, or that we maybe, maybe it was meant to be this way. And, and we could talk about like matrix constructs and like, was it meant to be that way? What are your thoughts yeah. when I start getting into that kind of stuff? Well, well, you're absolutely right. And basically uh, we do have the ability to see in those dimensions through remote viewing. Um, and we all, all of us humans have psychic abilities. It's just the problem is, is that we have forgotten that we have them. We're not taught them from school. And uh, when you get older, it's very taboo to talk about things like um, uh, clear visual abilities, clear audio abilities, remote viewing. So, um, so we end up living our lives really not tapping into uh, to our potentials in that, in that respect. Same goes probably for things like uh, telepathy, probably teleportation. There's probably ways that we can do that. Um, so, so I believe humans to be very, uh, very uh, untapped potential wise. And that is by design. And the thing is, when uh, the, the line of work that I'm into at the moment, which is to do with implant and entity removal and, and clearing metaphysical interference, um, that didn't come overnight to me. Um, that started, well, started about six years ago um, with, with chakra removal, which is another story, which we can get into if you want in a little while. But just to, just to sort of pad out this point that I'm trying to make is that, when you, uh, when you practice remote viewing and you do it daily, um, it becomes like a, a muscle that becomes stronger. Unless you use, uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I always liken it to, if I just use my right arm and I don't use my left arm, I'm not gonna be able to pick up much with my left arm. It's gonna get weak. Um, and that's the same thing with, with psychic abilities. So we can see in those dimensions, we can see um implants entities and things like that it's just we don't practice enough it's 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 something that we need to learn to do just the same as if you're going to learn another language you know i'm learning spanish it's a constant thing that i need to do to improve my spanish same applies for psychic abilities and uh you know just as an example the other day i don't know if you've ever had sleep paralysis it's not yes. very pleasant. I've yeah had... well if you if you ever get sleep paralysis it's like a double-edged sword because on the flips, on on the first side, it, it's not very pleasant. I mean, you're you're there, you feel like your your mouth's sewn up, you can't move, so it's not a very pleasurable experience. But when you flip it, you ask yourself why uh, why am I why am I being targeted in my sleep? Why am I getting sleep paralysis? It's because there's something about you that is a threat to the matrix. So they you know hijack your energy, maybe implant you, or you know just make you just so when you wake just so you don't have a good night's sleep and you wake up feeling like crap so you don't do what you were going to do in that day maybe it's it's to waste your time and um, so so when people are um targeted and a lot of us in this movement are very targeted energetically it is because and they can see our future timelines that in our timeline there there is some kind of threat to the matrix with allowing us to just carry on what we're doing unchecked so if you look at your story, I mean, what are you doing? You are creating content. You're putting out very regular podcasts to open people's minds, to get them to think differently, not get them to think differently, but, but to give them different, uh, different um, 
uh, information that, that is hidden that perhaps might expand their consciousness and move them a, a run up the ladder. So from their point of view, you're, you're a threat. So I can see why they would have targeted you with sleep paralysis and things like that. So, the, but the point I want to make is that um, the other night when um, I woke up eventually from this sleep paralysis and they're always trying it on with me. And actually I get wor very worried if they don't target me because I'm like, mm, is there something I'm doing wrong? So it's kind of normal thing for me. But the other night after I, I woke from the sleep paralysis, I, I literally asked my subconscious to ask to show me what had done this thing to me in the night. And I saw a five headed snake. It was a five, um, yeah, literally a, an entity with a snake with five heads. And um, I have uh, ways of clearing it. So I just cleared the energy and just cleared myself up from it. But that, that comes with practice that comes with, um, and, and, and you can feel the shift when this stuff gets removed. So, so that comes with practice. And that's something that everyone could do. It's just the, like I say, the difference between perhaps you and I, I've spent six years learning how to do it and training and strengthening that muscle. Um, but eventually where my work is going to go um, in the next six months to a year is I'm going to be putting something together to help people to start working with their own energy, start practicing these things um, and really, um, really uh, encouraging people to, to, to go here where we've been taught that it's uh, taboo or, you know, and, and really start um, strengthening those um, spiritual and psychic um, uh, muscles that, that we that we that have laid dormant within us. Yeah, I was going to say, like, who, who do you think is like controlling this construct of this matrix? Would you say it's something like that, like an entity or what the Gnostics would have called the archons or like, what, or is it the government involved with them or is it a mix or what would you say? So again, with, with this, is, it's a loaded question and you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as like, oh my God, all these things are attacking us, we're screwed. <laughs> or you can look at it, why? Why is all this stuff going on to try and hijack us? I mean, you just look at what they're doing just on the 3D level in terms of poisoning the water, the air, the food, like just on the 3D physical level, before you even get into the fourth dimension, You've got you've got that going on, like hij hijacking our physical body. But then when you go uh, into like the astral realm or the fourth dimension, which is basically a big trap, people go there, they take ayahuasca, they do this, all these plant medicines and DMT, and they think that they're they're seeing what really what really is true and everything like that. No, they're just seeing the fourth dimension, which is just uh, literally a layer of this matrix. We go way beyond this matrix as humans. Um, and so within the fourth dimension, you have not just one entity, it is teeming with entities, different, different types of entities, serpent entities, spider entities, octopus entities, um, demiurge, satanic, demonic entities, false white light beings, you know, you have these angels that are masquerading as the light and they're actually entities, um, you have the, the alien entities, so-called friendly Pleiadians and Arcturians and all this, and they're literally just all masquerading. They're just false white light beings. They're entities trying to hijack our energy and, you know, run these different agendas. And they all have different agendas. So, um, you know, you have like demonic reptilian agenda, like, like most people have heard of. But then I think at the basis of that is, is also an AI agenda. AI is very much, um, I believe to be possibly the head of the snake in all of this. Um, and, and you have like a false God agenda, you know, like the, the, the God that everyone prays to, I've made videos about this on my YouTube channel, uh, you know, the, the, the false God that people are giving their prayer energy to what's pray. When you're pray, you're pray, you're food for something. So you have this God, this narcissistic God that requires everyone to get up at four in the morning and bow down and then show up at a place of worship. And, you know, if you're God, why do you need someone to worship you? It doesn't make logical sense. It's narcissistic. 
So you've got this false God that's running an agenda and feeding off people's energy. Then you've got AI that are trying to exist through uh, human bodies in the end. That's their end game. Then you've got the reptilian, um, you know, the reptilian agenda that they have their own uh, agenda as well. So you have all these uh, different entities that are trying to hijack human beings and trying to direct the course of where we go. Um, and the reason that they're doing that this is the flip side of it, is that we are, we are incredibly powerful beings. We are incredibly, incredibly powerful. We don't even realize the, you know, 10% of what we're capable of. Um, we are massive, massive energy generators. Um, and if we even slightly woke up to the truth about ourselves, then it would be game over for all of them. And so they know that they know that about us and they know that if we do discover you know who and what we truly are which i strongly feel is we have a fractal of the creator working through each and every one of us you know we've been told that god's out there i i, I very much believe it's it's within um and i always i always like to mention the fact that you know when you look into someone's eyes it's almost like you see like these two mini universes that the eyes look the same as like a universe and i think that's very telling and as with all the things that i've mentioned before all the untapped untapped psychic abilities spiritual gifts that we have and we're so disconnected from them they've disconnected us in so many ways from you know i'm here at the moment you're there we're living in these blocks with wi-fi around us very unnatural ways of living probably we're probably supposed to be out in nature where we, where these uh, all these gifts are, are, are able to flourish. We're, we're bogged down with all these electromagnetic frequencies, which really lowers the whole frequencies, which allows entities to come in easier for them to create portals. So they, they're trying to um, hijack the, the, the energy of the planet and try constantly trying to hijack our energy in order to feed. It's like a cattle farm here. Um, so, as I say, you can look at it two ways. Oh, my God, all these things want to do this to us. But um, the, the, the core message of my work is really to take people full circle and back to why are they doing it? Well, it's, it's because I'm, I'm incredibly, incredibly powerful being. And uh, the more of us that wake up to that truth and start embodying it and stop giving our power away to you know, these poses in government and authority and the idea that we, we uh, someone, because they're born into another family, has the right to tell you what to do and how to live your life and what to stick in your arm. This is crazy. This is like, you know, we're, we're very infantile in the way we think. You know, we've been very brainwashed, obviously, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but really, they're, they're, they're terrified. I, I was I was gonna say from from these things that we try to do like you know from these spiritual awakenings that we have one thing that you tackle and I I think this is so important to touch on is I, and I'm so sorry I didn't mean to I just I just had to get this out was um you talk you you talk about the new age deception now what yes. I was gonna say is this is sometimes made from fake gurus but it's also do you think the new age deception is a matrix program itself being run. 100% absolutely 100% um one of the, one of my uh, purposes right now is to expose the new age movement and the new age movement was set up by a lady called Helena Blavatsky who was actually a luciferian and basically the the basis of it is is they knew that people were starting to lose um lose faith with religion you know religion was starting to decline although I still see a huge amount of people that want to pray and think that that's going to solve everything. Um, so, so they needed to create something else because religion has been such a great tool for controlling the masses, causing divide, giving pe people, people um, it hijacks our sovereignty because we, we're giving out, you know, we're thinking something out there is more special, you know, than, or, or powerful than we are. You know, we, we don't, we don't, it takes us away from our own creative abilities, our own abilities to uh, resolve situations, our own, our own abilities to um, 
to make ways around things um, and yeah, to, to become like gods in and of ourselves really. And so they needed something new. And so um, back then this, this lady designed this whole thing that we, we see now as new age, this what I call basically fake spirituality. I mean, there's so many teachers and teachings in that uh, movement, which uh, appear on the surface, very innocent and love and light. But actually, when you look at who benefits, it doesn't make good reading for humans. So, for example, the whole idea that we should um, just accept, you know, the idea, just just accept whatever happens. Well, who does that benefit if we just accept everything throwing that surely that benefits evil, especially what we're seeing going on now? Should we just accept the things that are going on in this planet? No, we shouldn't you know, just keep your vibration high, you know, and, and just, and, and that's all you need to do. Well, hang on a minute. <laughs> that, that, that's not going to cut it either because yeah. uh, they, there's think there's times when you have to face the darkness to work through it. You know, just, it's, I always liken it to, if you break your leg, are you just going to think happy thoughts and just hope that it, it heals? No, you're going to, take action uh, maybe you you need to go and get it put in a plaster or something and then it heals um you know the, there's so there's so much of it never get angry that that's one that really uh gets me you know the idea that we should never get angry about anything i mean well right there is such a thing as righteous anger and uh anger can actually be a great tool of driving us to take action and make great change in the world um, so, I mean, dwelling in anger obviously is, is not beneficial, um, being stuck in it 24 seven, but the actual initial emotion of anger is there for a reason. Otherwise we wouldn't feel it. Um, and the other, the other big one that they love is don't judge, you know, don't judge anything. God forbid, God forbid judging anything. Well, how do you discern information if you don't make a judgment on it? You know, judgment is part of the dis discerning process. And so in order to discern, which is really a lost uh, gift these days, most people don't discern, they just go with whatever feels good. Um, so how, how, are we, how are we to discern something, a piece of information, a person, if we don't make a judgment? So they want you to just accept, roll over, you know, don't do anything, don't take any action, you know, just, just keep in a high vibration and the big one obviously at the moment is that this whole idea of ascending to the the new earth you know this idea that if you keep your vibration high enough and you just think unicorns and rainbows that you're just going to wake up in the morning and there's not going to be all this government control and overreach and all the things that they're sticking in people's arms you're going to be living in this kind of like utopia just by thinking happy thoughts is unbelievable and so many people are falling for it why are they falling for it because it feels good because they don't have to do anything <coughs> excuse me i'm just going to take some water they don't have to take any action they can just feel like they're doing something but actually not well if i just sit here and and keep my vibration high then i'm somehow anchoring the light for the new earth you know there is there, there is no, no new earth in that respect. There can be a new uh, reality created, but it's going to take us doing hard work, resisting, speaking truths, speaking uncomfortable truths, um, changing the way we live, changing our behavior that's led us to our enslavement, giving up the beliefs in authority. It's going to be hard work. <laughs> it's going to take responsibility. That is how we're going to change the dynamics going on in this planet. But the new age movement has co-opted that. And they just say, you just think love and light. You just accept, don't judge anything, even if it's bad. And we'll all ascend and we'll, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll be living in this, uh, 
new age utopia and drinking rainbow juice. <laughs> yeah, well, one thing I've found on your channel is you have some of these people on that have had like horror stories from their 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 time in the new age movement. Can you talk about, I mean, I know you don't really want to give anybody's name, but like, can you just talk about some of the horror stories of some of the things that people have had to deal with, if you can remember any, like, um, there's just maybe some examples, because I know it is pretty serious right i mean yeah. i've seen a couple of your videos where they people get caught up in this stuff right yeah and and it actually makes me angry uh these new ages because what they're doing is very damaging to people um but it's shrouded in all this love and light so you wouldn't know it's damaging unless someone like myself comes along and actually really go, analyzes all the key points and see and shows where all the cul-de-sacs and deceptions are because it all feels and looks so fluffy and rosy, you just wouldn't even know it. But I mean, for the last seven years now, you know, working on people and clearing entities and, and implants and overlays and things like that, time and time again, I've had people come to me where they've spent thousands of dollars on, you know, working with Archangel Michael, Reiki courses, light language, all this new age stuff. They're no further forward. In fact, they're quite often, you know, way behind they're feeling drained you know a lot of bad stuff's happened in their life um and 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 yeah this 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 is over and over again and so it got to the point where on my channel i thought well it would be really good if i had some people actually because it's all right for me to say this is damaging people but if you've actually got someone that's been through it then it's it's a powerful testimonial so what i'm starting to do now on the channel is is to get um some people on that have been through the, some of the new age stuff. And I mean, I've had so countless, you know, a guy, he, I worked with him the other day, a yoga teacher of 25 years, and he was doing all this stuff. And he was like, I feel like crap. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I've, I've had people that have worked with going back to like the false white light beings, and this can be really triggering for people. Um, but stay with me on this is that some of these false white light uh, beings will masquerade uh, not only as angels and a friendly aliens, but also loved ones. And I, I had a guy, yeah, I had a guy who, um, his father passed and um, he, thought, he thought he was channeling his dad. And so he was getting all this information, following this information. He ended up losing his house. He ended up losing his wife, financial ruin. He ended up in a car crash, which nearly killed him. Um, and then when he joined the dots, he realized, he's like, why is my life just gone so downhill so rapidly? And he realized it was because he was following the information of what he thought was his deceased father. Um, and, and a great example of this the other day, uh, there's a channel, um, there's this channel on YouTube, what's it called? Most Haunted or something like that. I forget the name, but this guy's got a poltergeist in his house. And this poltergeist uh, speaks through the, uh, what's the Amazon lady? Uh, the, the, um, uh, I can't think of it. Yeah. The, but, but basically what's been happening is this guy, it got so bad that he's been trying to get help and he's had, he's got this guy in, um, this priest and, uh, this entity doesn't like it. And he's trying all these different things. And now what the entity is changing his plans, right? So now when he's coming through, he's saying, I'm your father, Jay. Uh, stop the priest. Stop this. Stop, stop what you're doing. And so I, I saw firsthand how, this, how they work. This poltergeist wasn't getting what he wanted. So then he changed plans, switched plans, and came through as he's quote unquote his dad. And this is how conniving and deceptive and evil these things are and it's really really difficult for people who have come from the new age and they stumble across my work where not only am i saying look don't connect with angels they're entities i'm also saying like god's fake <laughs> and i'm also saying that when you're when deceased ones are coming through chances are they're probably hearing for people and really hard for them to to accept which i understand i really do get that but if we're to get out of this matrix, we have to understand the depths and the levels to which our enslavers go to, to be able to work, a, work our way around that. And that all, obviously, it ties in with 
the false white light of death where you die, you're shown the tunnel, and then you're met at the tunnel by anything that you admired in your physical life. So maybe you're into Archangel Michael. So when you die, Archangel Michael turns up. Maybe you're really close to your grandmother, your grandmother turns up. Jesus, Buddha, you know, who, whatever your thing was, you know, they, they will, uh, they will um, craft it to your design, okay? And so we're met by a false white light being, and then the human, because they live in ignorance, because ignorance doesn't die when we die, if you don't seek knowledge in your physical life, doesn't mean that when you die, you're just going to have all the knowledge. So people are getting hooked back in. They go for the, the life review where they're guilt tripped. Archangel Michael might say to you that, you know, you're a good person, but in 19, you know, 1999, you hurt this person. So, you know, unfortunately, if, unless, if you, if you want to go to hell, unless you want to go to hell, you need to come back and resolve your karma. And so, you go, okay, then, uh, because you don't know any better, and then you're back down to be used as a battery and as a slave and everything like that. So. And Tony, I was just thinking, do you think this is why a lot of us like feel like shit sometimes because we're drained, not just from our physical lives, like because we have jobs and this and that, but because of our multiple, multiple lifetimes that we've lived on this earth, like acquiring traumas, acquiring um you know because you know no one goes through these lives without trauma it's like a it's like a it's a, trauma is like a badge of honor almost or it's like yeah. it's like it's guaranteed you're gonna have some right yeah yeah absolutely and and absolutely right about past lives most of us here um have probably had thousands of past lives um now I, i'm part part of what i'm really big on is is inner work um and i i'm always working on myself and I, I have sessions with a lady in Canada and I've, I've got through, I wouldn't say I'm not going to sit here and say I'm healed, but I've got through a fair chunk of this life's trauma, let's say. So the other day I was in a session with her and I went back into like a, a regression and I saw this, um, I saw this young boy and he had like black face, like a soot on his face. And, and then he had like a, a chimney sweep. Right. And then I realized I was like, somewhere in like the 1800s in London or something. And I could even look out the window and I saw the dirt track. And then he, anyway, I saw this man that was saying in the same room with him. And he had, and then I saw that he had like a demon in his face. Well, the story was that this, this little boy, his um, mother had died um, and he was like orphaned. So there was no one that, to, to take him on other than this man who turned out to be evil. And he was making him work a lot and go up the all the chimneys doing the chimney sweeping and he was also like physically abusing him and all and all of this stuff so i had to go in and help this little boy and change the holographic imprint there i've also had stuff around wars like the the, the second world war and the, the, like what's what happened there i mean a lot of people probably had past life and trauma from that as well so yeah i mean we're being recycled round and round and round we go like a merry-go-round and so yeah it, it's it's normal to feel like you've had other lives here uh, i've gone into sessions with people where they specifically remember it in the birth canal not wanting to come out um i've had people tell me i i remember being in the but not wanting to come out so we know uh i think on a subconscious level what kind of place this is and uh yeah, for sure. I think many of us have had uh, multiple lives and a lot of us are carrying through the trauma of those lives. Um, it, it all can be healed and changed. It's just changing the energy and changing that, the, the holographic imprint. Um, but, you know, obviously that takes time and effort and it's not the quick fix that the new age want to give you where you can just say a hundred self affirmations in 10 minutes and you're suddenly healed. Right. It's, that's, that's the new age version of healing, which is so dangerous, which is why really there's no healing that goes on in the new age. And of course, people are hooking in on false white light energy, which is a frequency that is like a false high. It makes you feel good for a day or so. This is why when you have like a Reiki session or someone's doing light language, you might get like a false high. I don't know if, you know, if you've ever 
taken ecstasy or something like that back in the day you know I, I tried it once when I was young there's that like high and then there's a crash the next day yeah that's that's what I liken false light false white light energy to it's like a distorted energy grid because they have to give you some sugar uh because if you do, if they don't give you some sugar you won't come back so you'll be like wow this feels great and then you'll then you'll crash but you won't relate it to the 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 false white light energy you know what i have a question I, it's so interesting you said because when you do light language or if you ever hear someone do light language it'll give you like a little brain buzz for like a tiny yeah. sec for like a couple seconds you'll get like you'll like, be like wow that was that actually kind of worked but like you're saying that's just the sugar to make you want to come back to do more of this yeah stuff right yeah it's hooking you into um a, a false white light energy grid which is what reiki is so this is why i don't say i tell people don't do reiki you can lay hands and heal but just use your own intention use your own energy you don't need to hook into something else outside and uh you know connect with all these different signs um again what that's doing is is taking it away from your innate power to you know work with your own energy and I'm, I, and if you do that, you should you should still feel sin. Depending on how energy sensitive you are, you should still feel uh, sensations and shifts and things like that. But you won't have the crash that comes after, maybe that you get with the, with the Reiki. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this. I, I know I talked with Ola about this, and she, and I know you've had her on your show, like where she has a, an idea of where we might go when we we pass instead of going to the light. But do you have any kind of plan like as to where we should go like but when we like instead of going to the light do we go look away from it or if, if we can't if we have a consciousness when we die and from near death experiences it looks like we might or it looks like yes. we probably do um yeah. do we just like kind of uh, shift our attention another way or like what if so i would never tell anyone what to do because yeah. everyone has their own free free will and what i would say to people is in the same way that you discern in life, or we need to start discerning better in life, we need to do that at death. Um, personally, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ask my consciousness to show me the way out. So I'm gonna ignore any light, any false light, any beings, any, if I see like someone that looks like my mom or an angel or Jesus, I, I'm just gonna ignore everything. And I'm gonna ask my consciousness to, uh, just show me where I need to go. So you're going, you're asking yourself and it, and it will show you just like when you remote view and it was, like I said, it will show me the entity that, that um, was, was doing the sleep paralysis. I saw it straight away. That, that, that probably, that ability probably becomes easier at death. And so there's, there's a couple of uh, different uh, things that I've heard. Personally, what I probably will do is, either find a hole in the, the fabric of the matrix or um, rip a hole in it myself. Um, and I guess uh, ripping a hole in the fabric of the matrix uh, depends on the strength of your energy. Um, but from what I hear, there's, uh, there's people escaping now and there's, there's holes in the fabric of the matrix. And um, also the reason why I think that construct is breaking down for them is because they're, the, the, way they, the way they trap souls, they're gonna change because they've had this whole false white light thing. People are waking up to it now. And so what they're gonna do eventually is they, they're gonna use AI and technology to, to trap our consciousness. So I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the TV series, Black Mirror. Um, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's really worth watching for an insight. It's a little bit depressing, but for an insight of what they wanna bring in. So what they're gonna do is, um, over the next, I don't know, however many decades, we're going to see um, advances in healing people with technology. And they're going to grow, grow this in the consciousness of, of the planet. And probably they'll say, oh, well, you know, if you use this, this technology is now curing cancer in people. And they're going to tiptoe this forward. Um, and, the, and it's going to get to the point where you might be like terminally ill with something and they'll say to you, look, Unfortunately, you've only got four months to live, but you don't have to die. And you'll be like, well, what, do you, what do you mean I don't have to die? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, use consciousness transference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload your consciousness 
into this quantum computer. And so it's going to exist there forever. And you can just take it out on a USB and you can plug it into a, you know, a teddy bear or, or something or a computer or something like that. And you can exist forever. You just won't have or, or in, into like a clone. Um, and so you can you can still live, but you won't be your um, original blueprint if you if you. So that's the, that's going to how they're going to sell it. And of, of course, you know, what's the biggest fear people have on this planet? It's the fear of death. We've seen that over the last two or three years, how easily people are manipulated when they think they're going to die. So, so their gig to trap souls in the future is going to be to get people to buy into this consciousness transference um, and get people to upload their consciousness to a quantum computer where it's going to be very difficult to get out of that soul trap. Um, you know, the, that that one is not something that I would like to be stuck in. Um, so, and and again, if you watch the series Black Mirror, there's two or three episodes um, based on consciousness transference, uh, and it's pretty grim. Um, so, I would definitely urge you to uh, to watch that series and, and your viewers. Yeah. Now, I wanted to get into um, the uh, the chakra removal and cutting sexual cords, uh, soul retrieval, all, all that kind of stuff. Implants, etheric implants. Like, if we could lump that all into one, or is that all? I know that's all separate stuff, but it's around the same kind of work, right? You're removing chakras, we're removing the implants. Like, if, if we could tell me why we remove the chakras, and and um, and and if you want to talk about removing the other stuff too, like the implants and stuff. Yeah, I mean, essentially what you're talking about is all energetic hijacking. Um, again, you you got to look at it two ways. You know, they're doing a lot to us, but they're doing a lot to us because they need to, because if we're left unchecked and in our full expanded state of consciousness, we're just, we're, they're just not a match for us. Um, and also there is something, there's like a half truth in the new age in terms of frequency, because with all this hijacking entity attachments, overlays, implants, it does keep our frequency at a, a lower um, a level, which is uh, easy for them to sort of interface with, if you, if you see what I mean. Yeah. And of course, of course the, 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 the chakras is, is the biggest one that um, in terms of my work, uh, people always want to talk about because it's so integral within the new age. Uh, you know, we have these wonderful rainbow colored lotus flowers that look so beautiful on the surface. Um, and this is really where um, the synchronicities started for me when I found out about it. Because I, back in the day, you know, I'd worked with chakras. I was Reiki level three, they call it Reiki master. I, I hate that term. Um, but, I, you know, I, I wasn't like big into the new age, but I'd taken my, my my Reiki three, so I'd work with chakras. I, I, I was, I did not have a bias towards chakra removal at all. But um, the, the, the short version of the story goes is that I was under huge psychic attacks um, about seven years ago. I put a video out that went viral, and it was basically a video that was really questioning, like military, what are we doing in these countries? Why are we obeying orders from people that are, you know, corrupt and all the stuff that they're into? Why are we calling these people heroes when they're going to these countries, bombing them and like they've got no right. Anyway, long story. But this I went to bed that night and then the next morning I woke up and um, this video had gone viral, had like 40,000 views overnight. And uh, my Facebook inbox must have had about 20 death threats because it unfortunately for me, it got into like military circles. So there was all these angry soldiers <laughs> threatening to kill me, which in and of itself didn't bother me because a long time ago, I, I knew I'd always, you know, I'd give my life for, for, for the truth and my purpose. And also I was living in the middle of Cambodia and, and I know a lot of these people are full of hot air anyway. So I wasn't scared, but, uh, but after that, something weird really happened. I can only describe that I was walking around in like an energetic haze and like a fog. I had extreme anxiety, which is uh, uh, very much a case of a heavier entity attachment as well because they turn the volume up on it. Um, and I was like, I don't feel right. And um, I couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, I tried all these things, detoxing and, you know, like different modalities to try and help myself. Nothing would clear it. I just won't, I felt like I was walking around with mud, in mud. 
going to the shop to, to buy milk was uh, anxiety for me. I'm like, this is not right. What's going on? And I got so desperate. I, I put, um, you know, I put a, like a call to action out for help. And, you know, someone approached me and, and she said, look, you know, I'm doing this thing. Maybe, it, maybe you might be interested. It's chakra removal. Um, it's helped some people. And I'm like, chakra removal, what? And the same question that I get, you can't remove chakras and you need chakras. And, you know, both are untrue. And uh, it was explained that, you know, the chakras are an implant and basically entities use it to lock into our energy field and to feed on our energy, loop negative mind thoughts around our head every day for 24 hours. You're not good enough. No, you're not worthy. You can't do this. You know, that voice that you've got that isn't your voice, that's them. And so if you imagine that the, these entities have a, a, an arsenal of weapons, the chakras is like one of their main weapons. And so partly out of desperation, <laughs> um, because I was in such a, a bad way and I tried everything, but also partly because at some level it resonated. At some level I thought, do you know what? It would just be like them to make the most beautiful things the most evil. And... Um, the image that came to my mind when she mentioned was in the matrix where everyone was plugged in into those pods. Um, that, that was really weird. It just flashed up, up, across my mind when I saw it, when she told me. And I was like, look, just do it. I'm like, I'm desperate. I, part of It partly resonates. Just see how it goes. So she did this session remotely. And uh, it, to this day, it still uh, sends tingles down my spine because it was when I woke up the next morning, it was like night and day. I mean, I just felt this cloud had lifted. I felt very light in my energy that all this constant mind chatter, I wouldn't say it's gone totally, but it, it dialed right down. And, and I just, I was just unbelievable. It was just like a, a massive aha moment for me. And I was like, wow, this is, this is a thing. And so at that point I, I was like, okay, well, I need to learn how to do this and because it's cool <laughs> and i need to put it out there to people that actually maybe what we've been told about the chakras is not true um and so that's what i've been doing and then you know just to to, to shorten the story once that implant was removed my psychic abilities started to increase and um i started to the more i started to practice and work with friends and family um initially um, I, I started to see different things and I would see implants that look like this, the kind of implants that Elon Musk is bringing out now, like with the, with the uh, Neuralink and all that kind of stuff. And, and so when I would be removing that, people were experiencing uh, bigger shifts. And, um, and so it snowballed, it snowballed into to removing implants. And then I started to see and perceive entities. And, and it's like anything, you know, when you do it for a long time, you, you, you become competent at it, just like any good electrician or a good, a good plumber. The more you practice, the more you know where to look and, and, and how to find these things. And, and, and so that's what it's, what it's come to today. And, and, and part of that includes, you know, the soul retrieval, um, we, uh, at the point of death, a lot of us sign up, con sign contracts to give up part of our soul energy. We make agreements with these entities because they're masquerading. And um, so there's a lot of contractual things that need to be resolved. Um, you know, parts of our souls stuck in different entity realms and, and, and stuff like that. And so it, it's, it's like a massive fantasy computer game in your inside of you, <laughs> basically. Um, so and, and every day I learn something new, every, every day I find something new. Um, and, you know, the, the, the most learning I've done is through working with clients, you know, because that, they're, that, that they really helped me to, um, to discover this stuff and, and understand or understand really how deceptive and manipulative these entities really are and the levels of which that they, they go to in order to keep us where they need to, to keep us going all the way back from what we started to talk about at the start where a person most people that are watching this um you know are at a level where you know they're probably targeted to some degree or another everybody's targeted um it's just some people have it more than others depending on your threat to the matrix basically so and that all ties in with what ola talks about in terms of the 
astrological signs being our barcodes um, for them to know what sort of uh, person that you are um, and what sort of threat that you pose. So if, you, if in your timeline, you're going to be someone that's really going to be uh, a, th a threat to them, they might start targeting you straight from birth. Um, and, you know, th there might be a lot of uh, abuse that happens in, in your family in terms of to try and take you off your path. Um, so a lot of us here, people that watch this information, um, would would probably have had a lot of difficult um, childhoods. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a huge, huge body of information that uh, we can talk about probably for two days, really. I think it's amazing work that you're doing, and, and it resonates with me. Like it, it resonates with me so much because I do feel like I'm targeted. And I I did a show with someone else where we talked about how you know, people are targeted individuals and, and how that all works. And, uh, and I never realized how big of a spiritual warfare it really is. So do you think that there's like a, like a, like a, like a positive creator or then if, if you had to guess? Us, we're the positive ones. And uh, this is the problem that we, I mean, I guess at some level there is a, yeah, there is a some kind of creative uh, element behind it all. And I think that we're a fractal of that, but it's people are, and especially right now, because things are very, it, it's never probably been never harder to be on this planet uh, than, it ha than it is now with what's going on. So people's natural tendency is that they want to escape themselves. Um, so they'll do that through drugs, alcohol, spiritual practices. That's an addiction for a lot of people. They want to check out, they want to go out there. And we have this other thing where, we want someone to help us or to save us or to to be the ones other than, than us to uh, sort our problems out. Um, and I guess part of what I'm here to, to say people say to people is as hard as it is, no one's coming to save us. Um, and that's a hard truth for people to swallow. Not Jesus, not, you know, angels, deceased family members. We have to do that ourselves. And um, we, we can struggle against that and go against that and we can keep praying. I mean, where's praying got us, you know, if praying worked, we'd have world peace right now. Yeah. But, right. And, and I, I just, I don't understand what it, it's, it's just people want something to lean on. They want that cushion, that buffer that they, that they can lean. Because if for a lot of people to, to conclude, to come to the conclusion that actually it, it's it's you it's us that need to sort this it's like ah okay now i need to kind of do maybe do something or take responsibility or or but that's what that's what we need to do that's what's necessary we've got to pick up our own baton and run with it not you know not pass it to someone else uh, allegorically speaking and and that's hard for people to accept and i get that because there's nobody more than me that would love to think that god or jesus or an angel or is going to come and help us and and or or aliens are going to fly down and 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 end the cabal and 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 great yeah i would love that it would be a lot easier i wouldn't have to spend my saturday morning doing stuff like this although i'm loving loving speaking to you but i'd much much prefer to be out diving or you know um pursuing hobbies looking at old ab abandoned buildings and houses and stuff i'm into all that stuff yeah um cool. yeah so i'd much rather be doing that learning learning to play a new instrument or something like that but you know this is what's necessary we have to do what we need to do and the longer we the longer we resist that the longer we push back against what we really need to do and start embodying that what i call sovereignty that 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 no, I'm actually a human. And I think we've forgotten or it's been lost how, how incredible humans are. And I see how incredible humans are with the ability, our ability to overcome um, challenges and um, to create. And, you know, you look at art, what we can create in terms of art, music, comedy, like we, we have all these abilities, psychic abilities, telepathy, remote viewing. I mean, we're incredible beings. And a lot of what I'm, I'm trying to get across to people is to, to remind them of that. And you don't need all these false 
beings that are, yeah, it's going to give you a false high. You might feel good for a day. Praying might make you feel good in that moment. But is it actually going to get to the root cause of the problem and change the dynamics of what is going on in your own life and in, on a collective level? So we, the, a big part of the solution is, is coming full circle and realizing that we had the power all along. That's amazing. That's really well said. I guess it's a good place to finish up for today. But one, I, think it is, quick, yeah. I, would, I, just, I just want to ask you about the life wave patches. Do you see a lot of promise in those? Like, and can you tell that is that, uh, uh, they activate stem cells? I mean, can yeah. you real quickly? I know you don't have a lot of time. I, I don't want to take up a lot of your time. I just want no, to quite, I don't mind talking about. Yeah. So I've got. Uh, yeah, that looks yeah, so basically, uh, again, it was a, a, a synchronic, synchronicities. Um, I've I've known for a long time that, you know, we're dying way too young. I think the body is self-healing. I think given the right conditions, we can probably live and live and live, you know, God knows how long, 200, 500 years, who knows? Because if you allow your body to heal and give it the right things, it, it does it naturally. You know, when you cut your finger, if you just leave it, it, it heals up, right? It's incredible. So the whole idea that we're living longer and all this stuff, it's, it's BS, you know, we, we're, we're not living longer, we're dying younger and we're, we're, we're getting sick longer as well. And so part of the things that I'm into is looking at how we can, um, you know, reverse age and extend age and everything like that. And uh, beginning of this year, I was like, mm, I was looking at stem cell therapy and that's quite expensive and, and um as synchronicity would have it i i i met with uh, one of my dutch friends here in mexico we went for a, for a coffee and uh, we, we met up opposite a stem cell therapy uh, place and i was like oh that's weird and i said what do you think about stem cell therapy and he's, he's like funny you should say that he's like have you heard of the, the patches and i'm like no what, what do you mean patches and he got out the life wave um glutathione patches and, and x39 and he's like, you just put one on a, an acupuncture point and the X39, what they do is they, um, they use the body's light energy, photon therapy, and turn it back in on itself, which activates a chemical in the body called copper peptides, which create new stem cells. Um, and I'm like, wow, that seems amazing. He's like, yeah. And, um, and so, uh, so I started using them because I don't, I don't promote anything unless I use it myself. And also the, the other ones he, he recommended with the glutathione. Now the glutathione is important because the amount of glutathione that you have in your body is in direct relation to how quickly you age and how quickly you recover from disease. That has to do with the telomeres, right? The telomeres. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to anti-aging as well. That's why I wanted, I was so interested in asking you about these because I, I've, I've heard people say about monatomic gold, but then I was thinking, well, it, it can't be anything nearly like what they had some, what some of these companies are selling. Like, you know, yeah. so this looks a lot more promising. Yeah. Well, one, one glutathione patch increases your glutathione levels by over 300% in 24 hours. And I put, I put this glutathione patch um, in this cafe and I started to feel nauseous and I'm like, Oh, I'm I'm feeling a bit nauseous from that. It's like, yeah, because you the glute it's it's work, it's getting the, the stuff out, you're detoxing. And uh, now when I put it on, I don't feel nauseous. But the initial, you know, boost that that glutathione was clearing stuff out immediately. But I've I've had the uh, I've got a, a number of examples. I've got a lady with fibromyalgia, she was bedridden, and then like a week on the X39, she's up and walking. And I've got a lot of different uh, testimonials from from people that um that, that are using them so yeah they're all there on my on my youtube channel if you want that's, to listen some videos awesome. up about say, how do we get these like is, is there an easy way to get them yeah so uh if you go to my youtube channel there's um there's there's a number of videos about life wave products and in and then there's the link where you can you can buy them they've got all kinds of different patches i mean I, I love the sleep ones uh this this silent night you put a patch on your your the behind your ear and it releases melatonin in your brain so you dream in like hd um so you have a really yeah you have a really deep sleep actually i use two patches when i go to bed i use the the silent night and i use the iron patch 
And what the iron patch does, it relaxes the nervous system. So you go to bed, you relax your nervous system, and then the silent night kicks in with the melatonin. And you just go into such a deep, deep sleep. And then so you wake up and you feel really uh, refreshed. Um, so all the patches are amazing, but the main two that I recommend are the X39 and the glutathione. Wow, that's amazing. Well, um, this was amazing. This was really great. This is this, so much of this resonated with me. I think I'm going to have to look into um, a lot of these things you talked about because it, I think it would suit me because I have to feel like I'm a targeted individual, you know, by these entities. If you're doing this work, brother, you will be. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, and it's hard to deal with. You know what I mean? It, it really, people don't realize how hard it is to deal with. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, um, I can't even explain it. They, 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 I'm sure people know it's the, it's the traumatizing matrix <laughs> yeah. to say the least, but can you tell everybody where to find your website, where to find your YouTube and anything else you want to promote? Yeah. So my YouTube channel is just my name, Tony Sayers. Um, my website is transcendingtimes.org. Um, that's got my books and my sessions and other things uh, uh, in relation to what I do. Um, yeah, I'm on Telegram as well. Um, I'm banned on Facebook, banned on Twitter. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're probably the best places to find. I'm on BitChute and Odyssey as well. Yeah, I do the Rockfin and Rumble. But I was gonna say, like, did you do you ever have like issues with YouTube? Do you get do you get censored? Did you ever have to do a backup channel or anything? Yeah, I mean, I've uh, at one point I was on two strikes. <laughs> Me too. And, uh, that, that was, that was very, yeah, that was a very nervous time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, we we don't know how long we're going to be on for. That's why I did the big backup channels on BitChute and Odyssey as well. Um, so, uh, but yeah, at the moment, fingers crossed, it, it's okay. It's up and running. So, do you think we did everything we talked about? Because I know we mentioned stuff going into the arm a couple of times. Will they let that go? Do you think we can put this on YouTube? Uh, well, we didn't we didn't say the uh, the actual name, so you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what they. You know, it's so hard to tell. Like, what are they going to come after me? Yeah. You know yeah. No. I mean? Like, so, and I want to put it on because I think it's great information. But it's like, yeah. No. What are yeah. They no. Do it today, be, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I refer to it um, a lot in in my videos, uh, but as long as you don't use the you know the names. Well, thank you so much. This was really a great time, and I I enjoyed this. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on. I really enjoyed it too. All right. Have a good night. Take care. Bye.